So we went through a couple of different elements that we uh, had to try out during the, uh, the training. One of them was to uh, basically help and retrieve uh, an unconscious skydiver, which is similar to if we had a, uh, an astronaut that uh, for some reason or another would uh, get unconscious during the landing and uh, we had to pull that person out. So we got to try that out in, in, in the test. That was also quite difficult uh, to say the least. I got to a point where I almost drowned myself instead of, uh, well, while aiding the, the, the so-called unconscious person. So, um, so I got to try that out and, and find out that uh, it is not as easy as it could look like. So, um, so that was a good learning experience. Following that, we also got to try to pull out same person, unconscious, out of the water, which again, uh, one thing is having a, a person by itself, by him or herself, but adding the weight of all of the water and the clothes uh, was uh, not making it uh, easier in any way. That is um, something that you need to take into consideration, of course. At the same time, a lot of the theory we got before doing this went into the dialogue between the boat, the person in the water, the, the rescuer in the water, and having people on land as well who could uh, get ready to uh, receive the person that needs help. So, uh, so that is something that you also need to plan into, uh, into your overall plan of um, you have a team ready inland uh, that can help if anything goes wrong. Practical experience we got was to uh, swim in the jumpsuit. Um, and that, of course, I knew would be difficult and hard, and uh, it was. Uh, but it's a good exercise to, to get the feeling of um, how difficult it is to swim uh, wearing all of your, your clothes in, in such a situation. And during the test, it wasn't even an, an outside scenario, so there were no waves, no wind, just uh, the easy water of, um, of a pool. So that was the easy version. Um, then we uh, added a little bit of difficulty to that part because uh, we also had to, uh, to swim in the jumpsuit with the uh, harness and with the parachute in tow after you. So um, something I, I didn't look very much forward to. I was quite uh, nervous about that test actually, but it turned out to be much easier than, than I feared. At the same time, also still difficult, of course. I had believed the harness to be a big burden on your back, but uh, that didn't change much in the way it felt to swim, I think. What made a big difference was having all of the uh, suspension lines from the, uh, from the parachute going to your harness. And um, when you are trying to swim, you easily get entangled in all of these lines uh, in, in your legs. You can get a little bit um, nervous about that. Uh, you, can, um, you can get a feeling, a little bit of claustrophobia perhaps uh, because suddenly you can't move your legs fully. But as soon as you realize, well, if I just turn on, your bam on my back, relax a little bit, continue swimming on your back instead, then it turned out to be much easier than, than I had feared. So the worst part in, in the end turned out to be that uh, you had this anchor after you that uh, just slowed you down very much with the, uh, with the parachute. Difficult, absolutely. Then we got to try another thing. We got to go in the water, get under the parachute and get out again. That is where you can talk about uh, feeling claustrophobic. The intent was to get under it and swim out and see if you can get an air pocket and just grab a little bit of air and then continue out. And uh, every time I tried this, I just couldn't make any air pocket. So I got under it try to, to move it and, and create this air, air pocket and then realize I'm not getting any more air than I already have in my lungs. That tricked me a little bit, with, messed a little bit with my mind, I would say, because uh, there again, you have to trust that you have oxygen enough to just continue going. And you don't have a choice, basically, so of course you do it, but um, that was intense for, for a few seconds. Even though you know you're just a few meters away and you have a lot of people around who can pull you out of this if anything goes wrong. But um, the last thing, we, uh, we basically got the, the task to uh, be in the water, get out of your harness, get out of your jumpsuit and uh, get up again from the pool. Before doing that, I had the impression that the most difficult thing would be to get out of the harness and the rest would be simple enough. 
But it turned out actually, for me at least, uh, that getting out of the harness was the easy part. But getting out of your jumpsuit was very difficult while being in the water. Once again, that was a, a learning experience where you just adjust your, your mindset a little bit on, on where the difficulties will be. A good couple of um, training sessions that we had. And I'm sure that uh, next time that we will have those trainings, uh, I will attend again because uh, it, it's good to be on top of those kind of problems uh, in, in a skydiving setup but uh, especially for planning the uh, contingencies that we will have to here in, in Copenhagen Suborbitals. We need to have a plan for everything basically and uh, so very good, we'll do it again and uh, I'm sure one day we, we have talked about that for a long time. Once we get the, uh, the space capsule dummy ready uh, in a f floatable version, we will go out in the uh, harbor of Copenhagen and dump the uh, the space capsule in the water and they do the same kind of trainings in, in that setting. Uh, it's a little bit out in the future still, we have uh, other focuses right now, but uh, there's no doubt that uh, we will do that in the end. When I got home I uh, of course had to, to tell the family about the, um, the things that we went through in, in this uh, training session. And um, the fun thing is that sometimes it takes another mindset to uh, realize what you could do different. And one of the things that was discussed here at home was that when I talked about the difficulties I had, I got the question from my 14-year-old son that, uh, Mas, don't you jump with a, uh, with a knife on you all the time? And yes, I do. So, in a sense, that was a thing that we, uh, we didn't discuss during the training, that um, you can have other methods of getting out of the problems that you're in. And one of those methods is, of course, uh, to, uh, to just use a knife and cut your way out of the suspension lines or the fabric that may be uh, giving you a problem. So it is very common for, for skydivers to have a, uh, what we call a hook knife, which you can basically uh, have on your, on your thigh and you pull it out and you can just easily cut the suspension line uh, if they are entangled in something and um, get you free of that. And in the setting of Copenhagen Suborbitals, that also makes a lot of good sense, I would say, to, to have a knife, um, a similar knife basically, uh, with the uh, astronaut, where uh, if he's trying to get out of the space capsule, we have it covered by a parachute, a lot of suspension lines, and he just needs to get out because, let's say, the um, the space capsule is sinking, what do you do? Well, you can use that knife to quickly just cut your way through all of this uh, and, and be out easier than uh, if you had to crawl your way through all of it. That's one theory. Uh, that can be tested of course and see if uh, it is a better solution than swimming under everything or whatever. So it's just another tool in, um, in the box to, to consider. So that's it for this uh, episode I guess. Have fun! Our team includes everyone from artists and kindergarten teachers to mechanics, programmers and engineers. And that's where Brilliant comes in. The interactive learning platform that helps you get smarter every day. With thousands of hands-on lessons in physics, math, programming and more, Brilliant helps you build real understanding from the ground up, one small concept at a time. We really like their first principles approach. We don't just memorize. Whether you're learning solo or with a team, Brilliant helps you sharpen your intuition, strengthen your problem-solving skills, and stay curious, just like we do when we are designing rockets and space capsules from scratch. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Copenhagen Suborbitals or scan the QR code on screen. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription.